Hey, what's going on guys? It's been a while since I've done one of those, eh? Uh, today we're taking a look at uh, the Deerstalker RXR from Motoroid, from Good Smile Company and their Motoroid line of model kits. This is from Iron Saga. I'll tell you guys right now, I'm not familiar with the source material of Iron Saga. This just looks like a really, really cool mecha model kit and so that's why I wanted to check it out and share it with you guys here today. As you can see, it's a pretty large box and a pretty cool looking kit. I don't believe that this is in any particular scale, but just based on the size of the box and everything, I'm guessing this is going to be probably similar to like a 1-100 scale Gundam, but we'll find all that out. We'll see just how great the kit is in today's review. Let's go ahead and get into it, starting with the box. Some beautiful artwork here on the front of the box of the Deerstalker, although it's like a bluish grayish mecha set against a bluish grayish background. It's not too clear and easy to like see the robot. It's much easier to see here on the backside right there. So there's where you can actually kind of see a better look at what it actually looks like. Over here, front and rear images of it, it says that it's gonna be 210 millimeters tall. So that's gonna put it at a little bit larger than your standard Bandai Master Grade kit. And as you can see, it does have quite long legs. So that makes sense. There's a couple more detail images of it. Another photograph of it right there and then a look at some of the accessories. Basically, it's just got this big massive cannon, and then a couple other little bits included a close-up there of the detail on the head that all looks really nice. Not too much else to see here on the box, except the Iron Saga logo there, and that's really kind of about it, so let's go ahead and pop it open. Right off the bat, it looks like we have a little correction right here, so it's just a thing added in. It looks like probably there was a mistake in the manual, so just make sure you pay attention to that. This was what was incorrect, and here's how it should have been, basically just kind of letting you know those numbers were wrong, so not a big deal. Our instruction manual is in a bag, which is nice in case your box were to get wet or something, otherwise it seems like a bit of a waste of plastic, but there's that box art there once again. A little bit easier to see here on the manual where it's not getting quite so much glare. Sorry about that, but then on the back side, same kind of stuff we saw on the back side of the box essentially, but a little bit here about how to apply water slide decals. So I did not know that this kit includes water slides. They're in there somewhere, I guess. We'll find those in a moment. But on the inside here, there's our parts list and then the entire manual is going to be in color, which is always nice to see. And although it's a pretty big box and it's gonna be a pretty big size kit, it doesn't look like, just taking a very brief look here at the manual, doesn't look like it's going to be a very uh, parts heavy kit or a very complex kit, basically like a large high grade essentially. But let's go ahead and check out the runners and we'll see for ourselves. And as for those water slide decals, make sure you don't lose them because I almost did. It's just a really tiny little sheet here just with the quicksand logo, two of those, and that's it for the water slides. We do also have a very nice base included here just in clear plastic. It's actually runner S, but I just wanted to show this to you guys first, so that's nice to have that. Runner A is going to be an off-white, but we do have a little bit of pre-printing there for the visor for the head that's pre-printed on there in a nice kind of fluorescent orange color. Runner B is some of the internal frame parts in this dark brownish gray color, and as you can see, it looks like it's not going to have any sort of ab crunch articulation here in the torso section as this looks like that's all the frame part right there just kind of in one chunk there for the torso. Runners C and D are some parts there in that nice purplish color which is kind of our secondary armor color. Runner E is some more parts here in that off-white. And then runners F, G, H, I, and J are all going to be some more parts for joints and weapon parts all this stuff here in dark gray. Then runners K, L, M, and N are all going to be some more of the off-white armor pieces here as well. There's all of those. Runners O and P are gonna be some more of that very nice lavender color for the armor. Runner Q, it will give you an idea of just how big that weapon is, so that's kind of like the main interior parts for that. And then lastly, runner R would appear to be some more parts for the exterior, or some more parts of that massive cannon right there and that's it for all the runners all right guys so here is the kit all built up and as you can see it's quite large i was expecting this to be kind of master grade size and it's definitely that if not even a little bit larger when it's all built up as you can see there but the main thing is that it's going to be very leggy it's got some really long legs and plus the high heels on there so it's got a lot of leg space but you also have those long parts hanging off the shoulders that are going to make it look taller just because there's a lot of kind of vertical lines going on there with those but really cool kit here it is going to be pretty simple in its design so don't expect anything really too complex but it's got a really great look some nice details all around and it's gonna be a pretty solid one so let's go ahead and check out the accessories here to start us off 
And it won't take a whole lot of time to go through those accessories because it's basically just your massive cannon is gonna be the main accessory we have. And this thing is gigantic, 30 centimeters in length. And compared to the Mecha itself, as you can see, it's much, much taller. So it's very large. You will have a couple of seam lines here and there, but it doesn't really have any moving parts other than just the handle, which you can slide back like that for putting your the hand on there and then you can slide it forward in place and that'll just kind of make sure that it's locked in the hand. The plug right down here is for putting this on a stand and we've got two different stands included. Now this one is the one that I would use for the rifle, I guess, which is just basically a little ball joint at the bottom and then just a little peg at the top. This one you have a little bit more articulation with, so I would use this for the actual kit, but you can rotate that at the top and then there's points of rotation here and here. And this little piece, kind of an ingenious little thing here, so you can change the angle of this and then kind of lock it into place by using this part, which plugs into the two pieces no matter what angle that you want that in. So that's kind of interesting. Other than that, our only other accessories are gonna be just a set of open hands, which are nicely detailed like that, and a set of weapon holding hands like so for the left and the right side, although you really only need one. And on the kit right now, I've just got the closed fist, so they're just fixed pose hands that you can swap out. But yeah, anyway, the weapon looks great, even though it doesn't like really do a whole lot really, and there are a couple of seam lines here and there. It looks really nice, just the color separation between the gray, the white, and the purple there. The white, I should say off-white. Anyway, so that looks really cool. I do really like the look of that. It's quite an impressive weapon, but it is heavy, so I think you are definitely going to have to use the stand to hold that. We'll test that out in just a minute, but real quick first, let's just take a look at the articulation here of the kit. Starting off here at the top, we have a double joint in the neck that will allow that head to point up all the way about to there down to there, right and left turn, no problems with that, but really nice detail and part separation here around on the head. And the whole torso section is just kind of one chunk, so you don't have any ab crunch necessarily, but you have a ball joint between the top and bottom half of the kit, so you can kind of move that forward and back, side to side, turn there like so. Around here on the backpack, even though you do have these hard points here on the side, nothing to actually plug into there, but these bits can be rotated forward and back. And then these bits down here, can also be removed. Now, I'm not being familiar with the source material. I would say that these look kind of like funnels or dragoons kind of, that can maybe uh, go off and then fly around on their own, but I can't say for sure, but those are just plugged up underneath this kind of lower part of the backpack right there. These big sections here attached onto the top of the shoulder via a ball joint there. Just take a closer look. The front part can be rotated forward and back as needed. Otherwise, it's all kind of just all fixed in place there, but that's what the inside looks like. It's nicely detailed, but you're obviously you're just going to want to paint that in just to make that look a little bit better. Otherwise, these bits here on the outside also just kind of fit into there like that. They don't move or do anything else really. The shoulder joint will not move at all. It's basically just going to rotate there at the arm. You can bring the arm up to about 90 degrees. That's about the extent of that rotation there in the bicep and a joint in the elbow is going to give you a nice full bend there so a double joint is going to give you 180 degrees bend at the elbow that's pretty nice and the hand although it's on a small little ball joint it's basically just going to be kind of rotation is most of the movement you're going to get out of the hand down here at the skirt section the back skirt is fixed in place though again nice detail on the underside as well but you're just going to want to paint that the side skirt as well just on a little ball joint so you can move that around and the front skirts as well you can move those here and there and out of the way. At the hip, you can bring the leg up a little bit more than 90 degrees, so pretty good range of movement there. Double joint in the knee with some separation of that knee armor is gonna give you a nice full 180 degree bend there at the knee as well, just like with the elbow. Looks like ultimately you can bring the legs out to about there to about 45 degrees uh, to the side. And then down here at the ankle, the foot is just on a ball joint, so you can move that forward back side to side like that. And the ankle does feel a little bit too loose. It's not like it's gonna come off, but for how tall and top heavy the kit is, you want it to have some pretty strong ankles, especially up on these high heels. And so I think putting this up on a base is gonna be a good way to make sure this is not gonna be falling over. And for putting it on a base, it's got a hole right up in there underneath the crotch, which is just your standard three millimeter peg hole. So if you didn't wanna use the included base here, you could use anyone from Bandai or Kotobuki or whatever to put this up on a base, which is nice. And so it's easy enough to get this in the hand and it feels very quite secure there, the connection to the hand, so it's not gonna like drop it, this massive weapon here. But the problem is that these long parts here on the side are definitely gonna be kind of getting in the way, especially this fin here out the back, because you can move this part here on the front 
out of the way, but moving this massive cannon around this big giant piece of armor hanging off the side of the shoulder is gonna be a bit tricky. That said, as far as the weight, I mean, it's holding it up all right. So, I mean, depending on the kind of pose, I guess if you wanted to have like a completely extended out arm, I don't think that that would really look all that natural anyway as a way to hold a gun of this size. But let's see, yeah, it seems like it's going to be coming down there at the shoulder, so the shoulder is gonna basically kind of be weighed down a little bit there like that, so having an arm extended out, probably not gonna be an easy way to hold onto this. But I'll try out a couple different poses here with this, and as you'll see, it is going to be a little bit limited just because of what I've talked about here as far as what you can do with posing the kit, but it's still a really cool looking kit with the poses that you can do with this. Even though you are a little bit limited, like I always say, for me the most important thing is that the kit looks good, and I think this kit looks awesome. It's a really cool, unique design if you guys build Gunpla and stuff all the time you know it's not too different from a kind of pretty typical Gundam style design but it's different enough that I think it'll give you something enjoyable to have with a kit like this and I think it's going to look even better when it's all painted up you do have a fair amount of really nice details around on there the colors of the kit just as is are nice so even if you just wanted to just do a little bit of panel lining to bring out the details maybe a little bit of detail painting to bring those out even more throw some water slide decals on there. The one you have included is just like a one decal and you could put some other ones on there. But I think it's one of those kits that you could just do a little bit of work on it, spray some top coat and it would look fantastic just as is, even if you don't wanna go through and fully paint it. But of course, if you go through and paint it up entirely, it's gonna look even that much better. It's a really good looking kit, a really cool design, a really cool just uh, proportions and everything to it. I really like it a lot. It doesn't necessarily do a whole lot or come with a whole lot in terms of the range of accessories, but I can definitely recommend it for those of you guys. If you like the design, if you think it looks cool, I would say go for it, check it out. It's a really nice one. And if you do want to check this kit out for yourself or anything else from the Motoroid line or anything else from Good Smile Company in general, of course you guys can check the link in the video description to USA Gundam Store. We've got all this stuff there available for you guys. And if you'd also like to leave a like or subscribe while you're here, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you guys all so much for your support. Leave any other questions or comments you guys may have down in the comment section below as well. And until next time, I hope you guys are all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye guys.